Hey guys, what's happening? This is Seth with another spray paint tutorial. Today I do not have another image available because I was dumb and sold the painting before I got a picture for it. Yay for intelligence, but we're doing like a moon scene at night on a beach and things like that. So to start off, we're taking a magazine sheet, <clears throat> spraying black in random spots, and we're going to use that to make our texture. You lay it down on the sheet and pull it up. So it's just like when you make a normal plan, but instead of removing paint, you're actually adding paint to it. You can do that as many times as you want, and you do not need to shade it. And just do that until you get your required texture. <laughs> Next, we're going to cover everything in black, naturally. And then we're going to add some colors on top of that to brighten up the sky and make it look beautiful and romantic. <laughs> oh, brother. Okay, then the colors we're going to add is... The colors we're going to add are, not is, are purple and blue. <clears throat> And after I spray the blue, I go back over with the purple because the blue kind of overtook it a little bit. But uh, just make it random. You don't want to make it just like solid chunks. Just make it random spots somewhere in the sky. And then after you put those colors on, you want to put white around your moon or planet or whatever you want to call it to make it stand out a little bit more on the horizon. To give it that glow look like it's a very bright and vibrant moon. Yippee! <laughs> Okay, then you want to take your stray edge and make sure it's as straight as possible. And I'm going to add blue. And I keep it like a medium layer coat because you, you want to have enough to blend, but, you know, not too much. Then we're going to add purple because there's purple and blue in the sky. And then we're going to add white, which is going to overall give us that water look when we go and blend it. Okay, and I sped this up because it took me quite a while. You want to do short little streaks at a time, keeping the... Uh, streaks as straight as possible so that way it doesn't look like it's curved water when you look at water on the horizon it's going straight across and just keep blending it to the best of your ability <clears throat> and if you have a little bit of black uh, towards the horizon like I had that's okay that makes it just look like it's reflected towards the surface plus we're going to add some white so you want to recover the line with the straight edge as best as you can I understand it's kind of hard with wet paint and we're going to add white to the horizon and then we're going to uh, paint some white going down from the moon to make it look like it's reflected. Next we're going to start building our foreground. Uh, you just want to do basic black uh, shapes on the outside, kind of like what I got. And then you want to build on top of that because you don't want the ground just being like flat. You want to, you know, put bumps and things like that to make it look like there's bushes and stuff that are going to be there. Okay, take your sock, fold it in half twice, and start dabbing away at the paint. And you want to do this first because this is going to be uh, your shadow layer. You know, you, you want you want to dab away quite a bit of it. Next, we're going to take magazine sheet and put blue and white on there. Take your sock, find a new section of it, and mix the two colors together so you want a light blue color. And I don't show it, but I probably uh, added more, yeah. <laughs> As you can see, I added more paint to my sock. I did this another three or four times, but I cut it out because I didn't figure you needed to see that. I figure I could just tell you. <laughs> but you don't want to cover up all the dark spots. You want to leave some darkness because this is at night, so you're going to want shadows and you're going to want some darkness. The highlights are just for making it not so dull looking. Next, we're going to add some finer details into the grass and the bushes. We're going to add some sticks and twigs. And I plan on doing a tutorial... Uh, later of how I do my twigs and trees and things like that because I realize I'm an idiot when I spray paint. I get in, I guess, the zone and I don't really pay attention to where my hands are, so my hands are in the way. But as you can kind of see, I'm holding the uh, palette knife on the actual handle. Now it's just flicking up really quick. That gives it, that makes it look like grass. You just want to do light, quick, uh, upward strokes to give it the illusion of grass. When you want to add like bigger twigs and things like that in trees, uh, that's when you want to hold it closer to the end and you know put more pressure on it. And what you just saw me doing, I was re-wetting the paint because it was starting to dry, so I was wanting to add an actual tree in, so I need to re-wet the paint to work with. Like I said, I'm sorry if you can't see, I have other tutorials talking about how I make trees and grass and things like that, but uh, it's, it's hard to show and I will make a tutorial in the future, so I apologize for the poor camera angles. <laughs> okay, and then I believe, well I guess I'm adding more twigs. 
I don't know, just depending on how much you want him to stand out, it just depends on how much pressure you put on the paddle knife. Now we're going to add rocks and stones and things like that. All you basically do is make curved lines to the best of your ability. <laughs> that sounds ridiculously stupid how I explained it, but as you can see, I'm just holding the palette knife towards the end, and I'm just adding quite a bit of pressure to scrape away paint to make it look like there's rocks. And you want to add a series of them together. You can add, you can make one big one, you can do two or three at a time, you can make four or five at a time. Next we're going to take some more colors. I believe I, yep, I do blue, purple, and white. Give it a different highlight color. So you have like a shadow color, a mid-tone, and then you have a highlight color. And the highlight cover is mainly meant, the highlight cover, the highlight color <laughs> is mainly meant to cover up where all your marks are made, cover up the rocks, cover up the twigs. You don't want to cover them completely. You just want to put them behind there because it'd look unnatural. It'd look like they're just stamped on there if you, uh, you know, didn't cover them up and they're just sitting there unnaturally. Okay, and next we're going to make palm trees. Yes, I was aware I didn't have a palm tree tutorial, so here we go. <laughs> Take a foam brush, add plenty of black paint into it, find a spot that you want to make, and go down the paper slowly, adding a medium amount of pressure, and towards the bottom of the palm tree, you want to curve it. Palm trees don't go straight up, they actually curve a little bit. And you can go over this two or three times like you saw me doing to uh, change the width of uh, the palm tree. And I, will, and I do two or three palm trees, so I'll explain a little bit better about how I do these in a bit. But um, I, I did the same thing off camera. You're going to use a lot of black paint for this. So it, it doesn't show me going off camera, but it's going to take a lot of paint. The foam brush absorbs a lot of the paint and everything like that, so you're going to need to continually add paint. But for the palm tree, there's a couple different ways to do this. You can just kind of like almost smear the branches in, or you can see like I'm doing here. I made like a line, kind of like an outline first, where I wanted the branch to go, and then I added my leaves on top of it. And I will also do tutorials on these because my hands are in the way. I'll kind of zoom in on this next one that I'm doing. But once again, pick a spot, make it a little bit curved, go over it a couple times to make your uh, to make your trunk. Add more paint. Make a line, and then you can just start building onto that line. There's really no technique to it. It just takes a lot of practice. Palm trees took me quite a while to get, as did a lot of things in spray painting, but... See, I zoomed it in a little bit here. Uh, make a line. You can just build onto it by adding leaves and things like that. You can, and usually palm trees have like you know three or four of these, and then they have like that. <laughs> this is going to sound weird. That little stubble, <laughs> I guess you can say, at the top of it. So it's not just boring. I guess it adds a little bit more to it. And you want to make sure that the palm trees uh, <clears throat> overlap the pl uh, the plant or the moon in the back, because that gives once again the idea of depth. You got the moon, and then the water in front of that, and then the foreground in front of that, then the trees in front of that, in front of everything. So it gives the idea of depth to it. And once again with the last palm tree, just the same as the other two, I like I said, I will make another tutorial on this. <laughs> but hopefully you get the basic concept down from this. And if you wanted to with your palm trees, I don't do this because I like them just being black because it's like a silhouette form because they're so tall and they're standing up right in front of the moon. But uh, you could add highlights to this. You could take other colors and dab them with your foam brush. I'd recommend getting a clean one because if it's got black paint in it, it's going to make your paint really dark. But if you got a different foam brush, you could have white and blue to it and do highlights to your leaves and things like that. But I don't personally do that, so I don't feel right giving advice on that. But you can very easily do that. And honestly, that's about it, guys. Basic moon scene. Well... It's, it's a little bit more advanced because we do a lot of nature stuff and a lot of stuff with the palette knife, but like everything, it takes practice. I mean, stuff with the palette knives and the foam brushes takes a while to get the hang of, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my other videos if you haven't yet, and I will see you guys later.